A very good afternoon, everybody. I, uh, I have been in the industry for over 20 years now. I love this industry because I feel that as an industry, we are there when people have any issue, be it claims, be it any problem, when the factory burns down or when at individual level they have a loss of their home or uh, they fall ill, we are there when people require us the most. Now that is what I believe and we work in. In fact, I tell in my company that we are a claim paying company, not a company which runs after premium. Our primary aim should be to be there for people who need us most at that point in time, we should be there. That is one side of the story. Now if I look at the industry, even the industry does a pretty good job. It is not that bad. If I look at uh, the amount of claims they settle, the speed of settlement, it seems to be pretty good. When I talk to the customers in general, or when I go to any social function, and the moment I say I'm from an insurance company, they say, Tum log claim nahi pay karte. you guys don't pay claims. Now that is an interesting uh, um, uh, uh, view. Here I see the statistics, the numbers, the number of people getting uh, claims paid, number of satisfied customers, and here I have a perception about the industry which says that the industry does not uh, pay claims. Now, to us, it looks like an industry issue where there is an issue of perception, there is an issue of understanding of what is covered, what is not covered. There may be some genuine cases also where there may be some grievances. Now, that is why we thought we'll have this session on demystify insurance claims as the subject. And for you, I've got a panel again the best from the industry to be able to answer your queries. To begin with, I'd like to first uh, take up uh, uh, Mr. K. R. Srivats, sir. Uh, he is the senior assistant editor, Hindu Business Line, a journalist for over 17 years covering insurance and he's also been covering taxation, banking and an expert in this field. Uh, we are very happy to have you here, uh, Mr. Srivats. A pleasure to have you in our panel. Uh, Thank you, sir, for having me here. Uh, if, if I can uh, straight away go to the topic of the day, uh, I would I would like to uh, take up the issue of perception which you mentioned. Perception in the market is uh, a mixed one, as you may be aware that. Uh, Claim of the industry is that uh, we are on track when it comes to claim settlement, but uh, the perception at the ground level seems to be very mixed. So, I would like this panel to go deep into what could be the probable reasons why the perception is still tilted against the industry. Thank you, Shrivas. I think you have hit the nail on the head. That is exactly what we are going to do. One, try and demystify the entire process of claims. Try and put forward why this perception is created. I am so happy to have you in my panel because I think uh, that you know very better than you who are bringing the customer's perspective to this discussion today. I move on to my next panelist, uh, Mr. B. Sriram Sri Vasu, probably called as Vasu. He is a property loss adjuster all in the simple term, uh, a surveyor uh, with great expertise. He is a mechanical uh, engineer, worked in a lot of German companies, and he has huge experience of power plants, of understanding big uh, risks. And he works for uh, Bhatwarekar Insurance Surveys and Loss Adjusters, one of the most famous uh, group of uh, surveys and adjusters, and it's a very respected uh, firm. We are so happy to have you here, Vasu. Thank you. Thank you for uh, inviting me here. I look forward to a good, interesting session. The Thank next you. Yeah. And then I move on to an, another expert who is on the panel of most of the insurance company, uh, Mr. Sunil Lakshman Dravid. He is the advocate uh, Pune uh, District Court, and he has, uh, is also the president of the Investor Grievance uh, Forum for Pune. And as I mentioned, he is also on the panel of most of the insurance company. I don't think we have got a better person, an expert in this field than Mr. Sunil Lakshman Travit. Uh, welcome, Mr. Travit. It's a pleasure to have you with us. Thank you. Thank you for calling me. I will, uh, I will answer all the questions which you have. Yes, thank you, Mr. Travit. I'm sure that's why we have you here. 
and then I move off to my two most important uh, person in the company, my CTOs. Uh, first, I have my CTO uh, non-motor, which means anything in this company related to non-motor, be it I'm writing our claims, uh, he is the man. Uh, Ramalingam, it's a pleasure to have you with us in this panel. Yeah, thank you uh, and good morning to all the panelists and uh, uh, Mr. Srivast has already set the ball rolling and I'm sure that we are going to have an interesting uh, uh, round of discussions during the next one hour. And then obviously the CTO non-motor is there, there also has to be CTO motor. Mr. Vijay Kumar, industry expert on motor, again anything about claims and writing, he is the man. Uh, welcome Vijayji, it's a pleasure to have you here uh, on the panel. Thank you, Tapan, for giving me this opportunity and uh, good afternoon, viewers. We hope to have uh, a fruitful uh, discussion. Good. So we get down to the subject uh, right here and right on the job. Uh, let me pick up some questions that come to us uh, earlier. I think there's one very interesting one which I see, though not purely a claim subject, but a, a customer uh, uh, perception. Uh, it's from Manoj Pandey from Greater Noida. Uh, Manoj says that uh, we as a com customer have an impression that insurance companies are cross-subsidizing the group medical policies at the expense of other portfolio including individual health policies. Why should I as an individual medical policy holder bear this cost? Can you assure the individual policy portfolio is banned as a separate block? Uh, you know Manoj, this is something which is, uh, which is very interesting. There was a seminar a couple of months back in which this question uh, came up when somebody mentioned that uh, they are you know, giving more to the customers than the customer has been paying them and uh, that is the way looking forward. But if you look at it, the point you said it, the individual customers who actually at times bear uh, the cost for the corporate uh, customer or the GMC. We as a company have a clear uh, philosophy on this. Uh, we treat these two uh, entities separate and in all industry forums we put forward this point. We believe that the individual customer's rights should be protected his pricing should be looked at separately and if the group pricing is not viable, it is good not to be there and then to ensure that the individual is subsidizing that. And you'll also be happy to note that even the regulator, uh, I think member non-life also mentioned this point very strong and they started looking at it. In fact, for the GMC policies, the regulator is also looking at companies which are not uh, following uh, the, uh, the policy of uh, having the adequate rate for the aggregate cover. So bang on, I think that's a very uh, good question and I'm sure as I mentioned the industry, we as a company and the regulator is also looking at this. But uh, this should get sorted out pretty soon. But at least from our company's perspective, it is already sorted out. Uh, from here, I move on to uh, a question which uh, uh, which is there for uh, uh, Vasu. Vasu, there's a very, uh, uh, I think it's a very, uh, very good question I would say, though simple but uh, it uh, talks about what exactly it is. It's from Pradeep from Pune. He just says simply, how to claim under fire oblique IR policy. So he says if there's a fire or an IR policy and he has a claim in that, what all should he do? So could you in short try and explain the critical uh, steps that uh, should be followed for this uh, particular uh, claim? Once an incident occurs, then claim starts triggering, whether it is a fire policy or an IAR policy. The first thing you should try and do is try and arrest the incident. If it is a fire, try and see how he minimizes the impact of fire on the property and the surrounding area. Even if it is an IAR, same, the accident relating to consequences, these consequences should be minimized as quickly as possible. At the same time, they also have to report to the to the fire brigade who come and help them in dousing the fire and then the fire engine comes, they attack and solve the issue. Once that is done, you should also simultaneously intimate the insurance companies, so they will appoint a surveyor and he starts identifying the damages, segregating them. Critical is that time is essence look at how quickly we can minimize losses and at the same time also identify what is damaged. Once that is done, then the assessment can happen at a later date where you look at the policy conditions, what is covered, what is not covered and then 
the claim gets processed after the surveyor issues the report to the insurer. Thank you, Vasu. Just uh, two comments from my side on this, and I've seen this happen. A lot of times when we take uh, the policy coverage when the factory is uh, is uh, new, and then we don't change the sum insured. It remains uh, where it was. Uh, that's the overall cover for the risk. And as uh, time progresses, that cover actually becomes very less, uh, which is called the under insurance in the insurance perspective, which actually means that the premium paid was for a less amount compared to the value of the risk. So when a claim happens, the claim also gets paid on a direct proportion to the value of the uh, insurance done. And this actually at times creates a lot of misunderstanding among uh, uh, customers. And they say, no, my entire no factory has got uh, burned and uh, uh, this is the current value of the factory and this is what I should be uh, getting. But the value of insurance is much lower than that. In a partial uh, loss case, it will become divided uh, from that perspective. So one of uh, the recommendation is that if you have a policy and uh, you have not checked the current value of your risk, uh, please keep on doing that. Every year uh, when you take a policy, this should be the most important thing to do. And the second, the most important thing to do is look at the policy document that you have got. Look at the terms and conditions. And let me assure you, I think, and I can say this on behalf of the industry and specifically on behalf of my company definitely, that what you have bought and what is covered and what is there in the policy document and is adequately covered, your claim gets uh, paid uh, the moment uh, all the documentation is uh, completed and it is established that this is the quantum of loss. Uh, you will be surprised to know that at least in, uh, in Bajaj Alliance Generations Company, the settlement ratio for non-motor claim is 98.7%, which means that out of 100 claims, 98.7% uh, gets uh, settled at a, a record speed. Now, that is what it is. So fundamentally, the issue comes in in these cases is for under insurance uh, at times of lack of knowledge of what is not covered and uh, what is covered. So this I thought I'll uh, bring to your notice. From here, I uh, move on to a uh, question from Jay Prakash uh, Shukla from Pune. Uh, why 50% depreciation is applied on rubber and plastic parts irrespective of vehicle use, age and condition? Currently, depreciation on parts are applicable on age of vehicle, which cost on pocket of a customer, irrespective of vehicle use or condition. However, replacement of new parts in the vehicle does not enhance insurance value, IDV, or market selling price. Current TPPD claim process is so complicated that fault making road user goes scot free, innocent, suffer losses. Wow, I think you have covered the entire segment of uh, motor uh, claim in one uh, question. Uh, I'll hand it over to uh, Mr. Vijay Kumar uh, to give his view on this. Yeah, uh, Prakash, I think there are two questions and uh, the first uh, part I would like to answer. First, um, the depreciation uh, clause uh, has been uh, you know, incorporated in the terms and condition of the motor insurance uh, package policy primarily to make sure that, uh, uh, you know, uh, there is no undue benefit actually drawn, uh, you know, and whatever just loss has happened and that just loss is completely compensated. Uh, when the vehicle is used, uh, the obviously the parts life, uh, life uh, you know, is also consumed uh, and uh, uh, when we are replacing a new parts, uh, uh, then it, 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 the cost paid is for the new, new part, whereas the the vehicle has already been used for a certain period and particularly in uh, uh, plastic and rubber uh, parts where the life is even less somewhere in older uh, time the life uh, of the uh, plastic and rubber parts used to be just one year or two years so that is how and even current uh, scenario also compared to metal the plastic uh, and uh, rubber uh, uh, part life is shelf life is less and as a result of that, this 50% uh, clause has been kept, and which I feel is uh, uh, quite fair even in today's scenario also. Whereas in metal, uh, because the life of the parts are quite uh, long, that is why it is based on the age of the vehicle. The whole uh, provision is uh, to ensure that uh, whatever actual loss has happened, uh, that is uh, compensated and there is no undue uh, you know, uh, advantage uh, given to either party. Uh, with regard to the other uh, question uh, of uh, uh, on the uh, liability claims, uh, uh, obviously 
uh, you know, when injury happens or the uh, death happens to the uh, uh, on the roads, uh, police involvement is necessary uh, to decide who is at fault, and based on that, the claim uh, has to be settled. So somewhere, uh, the courts and uh, police involvement in the first level is uh, necessary. Maybe subsequently. Uh, with proactive approach, uh, the insurance companies do try and settle the claim fast. So it all depends on the claimant also whether uh, you know they want to settle the claim faster. So uh, nothing stops uh, from the insurer and the claimant to uh, close the claim faster than what is happening most of the time when we depend on the roads, uh, depend on the courts uh, to decide the uh, claim. Nice. I hope I answered your question. Yes, thank you, Vijayji. I think this is where, in, in terms of motor, you know, when you take a cover, the general feeling is that anything which happens to the vehicle uh, will get paid. Yes, uh, if it is an accidental damage, it gets covered. But you have this uh, depreciation uh, of uh, parts, you have uh, the excess which is there. So at times when uh, a damage happens, it's mostly on the rubber or plastic parts, the customer gets uh, surprised that uh, the amount which he has spent for uh, repair or uh, replacement compared to what he got is different. But that, as I mentioned, is there for all insurance companies because the motor product is is not yet uh, freed uh, from regulatory perspective to be devised by different companies. So as of now, if you have a motor uh, product and you, if you have a loss, there are this provision which is mentioned in the policy cover. This to me again has been an issue where I noticed that quite a few times and there has been a grievance. Uh, now, if I uh, move forward, another interesting question, which is from Priya Yadav from Chandigarh. Uh, she says that is there a provision to challenge a claim payout if the survey includes lesser items in the claim payable uh, section? Uh, Priya is a very interesting question because the general feeling is that if the survey report is made, uh, then uh, that is the end of it. It is not so. The basic role of a surveyor is to be on the site to assess the situation, to bring to the insurance company the facts of the loss, uh, the different uh, uh, scenarios of the uh, claim uh, process. It is the insurance company which finally has to take a call and decide uh, what to pay. And if there is any uh, grievance like the one that you mentioned, you should definitely uh, bring it up because the judgment has to be uh, by the insurance company on the terms and conditions of the contract which is uh, there. A lot of times confusion happens that the surveyor has uh, said this or surveyor has not said this. The surveyor's role specifically is to bring the facts to the insurance company and the insurance company has the right to decide on uh, what is the a point mentioned and what should be taken. So uh, that I hope because this issue again keeps on coming from a lot of uh, places. So I'm very happy to see this uh, question of yours. From here, I'd like to move on to uh, Srivats, sir, because as I said in the panel, Srivats is there from a customer perspective because he is uh, he's a journalist of repute and he uh, brings in different perceptions. Srivats, what's your uh, uh, opinion? What's your take? And what do you feel that the customer at times uh, has this uh, perception? What the insurance company should do to correct that uh, from your perspective? Yes. Uh, see. Uh one, I think it is more of uh, what you referred to in your initial remarks, uh, a proper understanding of the uh, various clauses in the contract that he has entered into. Quite often it is uh, seen that a customer takes certain issues for granted and therefore there is always a disconnect between what he thinks is the level of claims that he is entitled to and what the insurers or the insurance company has to say uh, when you uh, really are faced with the situation of claims. So that is on a, something on a general view. But before I go into this aspect, I would like to uh, just go back to the issue of depreciation that one of the customers raised. So I, I, I just wanted to throw open this issue. Do you think this? Uh, panel can address that uh, we are having a new companies act in place where the depreciation rates for various uh, transport and other vehicles have uh, the useful lives are getting altered so do you think will it have a bearing on the general insurance industry 
good uh, question, Shivas. Actually, as I mentioned to you, the product which is currently there, uh, the motor product, has this uh, fixed uh, clauses of uh, depreciation of metal 5% each year or for rubber uh, 50%. Uh, uh, now, what I actually see, uh, the way, like you mentioned, uh, the depreciation is, uh, we don't actually go by pure uh, companies act, but by the life uh, that is there for the particular uh, risk or the particular asset and uh, how would it uh, depreciate. Though we take a reference of that in terms of settlement. But where is clearly defined, let's say an automobile is clearly defined, then we have to follow what has been clearly defined in the product which is there. Where it's not clearly defined, then we do take into consideration um, the uh, company act that you mentioned and also we also take into consideration the uh, value of, uh, uh, as I mentioned, risk or the value of the asset which is there in terms of uh, the uh, life which should be there. And this is done in discussion uh, with the insured also. But uh, would uh, uh, Sriram uh, Vasu uh, like to mention something on this? Yeah, typically the first hurdle we face with clients is they generally underinsure and they are mostly it is out of ignorance than out of intention. They take a policy and insurance is generally the last priority. While insurers also pay attention and there should be market awareness and more education like these sessions. Clients also need to pay specific attention to insurance portfolio. Typically when there are large claims in property, they can run into few hundred crores. That in itself is a project. But for them it is a bureaucratic process. They pay very least attention and most of the issues come because while taking policy it is a question of just meeting the deadline of paying the premium and keeping bankers happy, keeping the shareholders happy that we have a policy in place than paying enough attention to what they need and whether they have adequate coverage because there are there is a wide coverage available. It is a choice of customer which cover he has to take and at what level. So this needs closer attention from the clients also and that's where possibly brokers and insurers can assist and surveyors also when claims come they can assist but it is always the, the disaster happens and once that is passed people forget and it is back to square one. We often see that we have repeated claims in some clients and they just do not change or correct their errors and depreciation is one major issue there. Uh, I, you want to say something really? Maybe uh, yeah, from motor uh, perspective, uh, I would like to add here is, uh, I'm, <clears throat> as many of uh, the viewers may be knowing that uh, uh, with the age, uh, the premium also reduces. As the vehicle grows old, uh, the premium also reduces because the premium is calculated based on the sum insured. And sum insured or market value reduces, therefore premium also reduces. Now, accordingly, uh, the depreciation also uh, increases, uh, where the customers uh, uh, out of uh, pocket expenses uh, on account of depreciation also keep increasing with the age. Now, I think in, in the uh, entire industry, now all companies are offering uh, uh, add-on covers which uh, cover the depreciation part also. So, customer while buying insurance can opt for those uh, uh, additional add-on uh, products which cover the depreciation also. Fine, I see Sri, uh, Sri what's, uh, you have some uh, question there, uh, uh, please, please ask. What, what I wanted to understand and also bring to the table is that while we uh, appreciate the fact that most customers don't uh, put enough emphasis on uh, whether they are adequately insured, but we should also look at the problem from the perspective of uh, how big the uh, customer is. Because in this in insurance uh, thing, we have small SME customer to uh, an individual, to a large corporate client who are uh, availing the service of insurance. So uh, if it is a problem of perception, I think the perception problem is more at the lower spectrum than the higher end of the spectrum and and uh, uh, 
if a large corporate is not able to adequately insure itself and take care of all these nuances then it is entirely the problem of the corporate but i think where uh, the issue of literacy and understanding is more important is at the middle segment and at the lower end of the customers who as you as you are well aware when they going for motor insurance and other insurance have a uh, uh don't have the ability to completely comprehend the nuances of the uh, uh product i think it's a very valid point shivan and that is where the perception gets created uh, there's one thing which uh, which has come a discussion which as a company we should start uh, doing now and maybe i'll take over the industry forum to talk about is a very simple thing we should one tell the customer what are you not covered for you know and in fact as customer as consumers those of you are watching this show or who are there on the twitter or facebook just remember that whenever insurance uh, policy being sold to you just ask one question this is good please tell me what am i not covered for i think that one question if we get it right from our side as a company industry we should in fact talk about that first and then talk about the rest and if the customer says no i want to cover for this we should try and provide a solution i think that really works well in fact that reminds me when we devised this policy for our uh, householder cover i think uh, we shifted from the industry norms and we came up with the policy for the individual customer which is an all risk policy uh, for his home so taking your point shivas we want to show that uh, how and at what level can we go to ensure that the customer's coverage is more comprehensive and what we are not paying gets more and more minimal but now even that what we are not paying we'll try and bring to the surface of uh, discussion so the customer is aware rama you have a point uh, uh, yeah actually i think uh, what uh, mr shivats is saying is is very relevant and uh, if you see in the last one year a uh, lot of work is being done in that area the recent health regulations which came in uh, october has actually brought about lot of clarity regarding the retail health policies the one of the core issues which always used to create lot of problems with claims was the, the definition of pre existing disease i think that has been very clearly defined in that regulation and all the policies which are being sold in the country are having the standard definition so going forward i think uh, the regulator should would be coming out with uh, some new guidelines uh, which will also take into consideration all the other lines of business but a beginning has been made in respect of the retail lines especially the two largest lines motor and health and i'm sure that going forward the customer will have better clarity about the terms and coverages and ultimately what he is going to get in at the time of a claim yeah i agree with you rama and i think as as a as an industry we have to move forward in devising products where what we don't pay becomes less and less you no know, and very clearly defined it should yeah. not be in the fine prints i think that is where the issue comes in but as you rightly mentioned i think uh, the regulator the industry looking at it as a company also we are very focused on it i'd like to move on to uh, mrs uh, sunil uh, he is as i mentioned an advocate of repute and he has been seeing lot of uh, these claims uh, from an advocate uh, perspective one i ask him as to what is his perspective on the claims and what uh, he feels that times the consumer misses out because of which uh, there are issues coming up and second what is his perspective as a customer and expectation from insurance industry as a whole uh mr uh, sunil over to you yeah so far as the customers are concerned uh the uh, most of the cases which are coming to the court are <clears throat> accidental cases where uh, some persons are injured and some persons died now the people come with a case that we we are entitled for such and such amount but uh, we have to go through the uh, his income age and other as aspects and uh, have to decide the uh, cases accordingly further more yes uh, we are listening uh, uh, i think that's that's a, that's a fair point again uh, uh, there is a very simple calculator which is provided by the court of uh, law and most judgment gets are done on that and like uh, mr sudin uh, mentioned that no if uh, that is taken into consideration it makes a, a big uh, difference uh, from here i would like to move on to some more questions from my friends from uh, twitter i think uh, there's one uh, uh, which says that uh, from pink city saint uh, uh, 
if I choose not to offer claims in case when loss is minimal, how do I gain out of it? Uh, it's a very, very valid question. Uh, uh, and I see that you follow us on Twitter. Uh, well, thank you first for that. And second, in case of uh, motor uh, claims, there's a provision for no claim bonus and there's a Rate has to be looked into is if the claim is small and you claim for it, what you lose out as discounts and intervals at times gets bigger. So you have to evaluate that and that is what most people do and for small claims it's more like a maintenance which you bear uh, as part of running your car and it's better to have uh, a no claim bonus for a longer period of time because the amount of uh, premium which can be saved is up to 50% on the own damage part which is substantial for a long period of time. So I think that is how one should look into it when it is there. Uh, what happens or what should I do with my policy when I sell the vehicle is from Harsh Deep. Uh, Vijay, you want to take this? Uh. Uh, yes. Uh, <clears throat> now, uh, it is possible to, you know, when you are selling the vehicle, it's, uh, you can uh, switch over this uh, uh, insurance, uh, uh, whatever you have uh, to the new vehicle uh, as, uh, you know, answered the uh, in the earlier question uh, by Tapan, uh, the advantage will be, you know, in case uh, you are carrying a handsome no claim bo uh, bonus, that also can be transferred on to the new vehicles. Uh, and uh, I think another very important, uh, uh, you know, point for the viewers' uh, information is that whenever the, you know, the vehicle is being sold or vehicles is being purchased, uh, I think the most important is to inform to the insurance company and uh, complete the changes in the policy terms and uh, you know, uh, terms, uh, name transfer, etc. should happen and uh, that should be the first thing one should do, look at it. Uh, you know, otherwise, uh, in, at the time of claim, uh, you know, uh, there could be some uh, you know, issues uh, at the time of claim. Um, there is another question from Sneha Adnani from Pune. It's a, it's a very interesting question. Uh, she says, I'm your car insurance customer. For that, a uh, big thank you, Sunaya. Having claimed as of now, uh, we hope that you're always safe and uh, secure. But need to know, in case I meet with an accident and I damage my car badly in a remote area, see the glass is totally shattered, what should I do? Should I leave my car in a safe spot after informing the insurer? If yes, in case some theft happens of car parts later on, will I be paid? Uh, very valid uh, concern. Uh, would you like to take this one also? Yeah, that's also I think uh, a very uh, important uh, uh, in a remote areas. Uh, the first and foremost requirement is uh, to inform the insurance companies. Uh, there is a you know, call center 24 into 7, 365 days call centers for most of the insurance companies is there. Uh, one can register a claim online as well, and uh, once the insurance companies uh, is informed, they might uh, uh, like to guide uh, as to you know which is the nearest garage where the vehicle can be taken, and uh, a particular uh, scenario where you know only the windshield is shattered. Maybe some companies uh, may like to exempt the uh, you know survey or may guide uh, accordingly. Of course, it depends on the insurance company to insurance companies, and. Uh, <coughs> After uh, the insurance company has been informed, the insurance company will guide uh, to the nearest garage and uh, the vehicle can be taken there for the, uh, you know, further action. Now, uh, with regard to, you know, any further aggravation of the damage or loss, uh, the policy provides, uh, there is a provision of uh, on-the-spot repair of, you know, cost uh, reimbursement of 500 rupees if there is a minor damage which can be repaired and uh, uh, there is a provision available or uh, there is also a provision where the vehicle can be uh, towed or you know um, and the uh, reimbursement up to 1500 rupees is uh, made by the company. Uh, the responsibility of uh, vehicles uh, to be kept in proper custody and uh, in safe custody I think uh, is that of insured and uh, insured uh, should take advantage of the provision which are there in the policy. Thank you, Vijay. Uh, Rama, I have some question for you. It's from uh, Pradeep. Uh, he mentions that uh, uh, if uh, burglary claims happen or money insurance or fidelity, what should you do? 
and the second question that he has what are documents required for settlement of uh, uh, claim so would you like to take this round yeah sure <clears throat> uh, in respect of uh, burglary policies i think uh, the the first aspect the client needs to look at is uh, whether uh, the incident which is mentioning is covered under the policy because many times customers may be having a fire policy and uh, if there is a burglary happening they may be under a wrong impression that the this is covered under a fire policy so it's very essential that if it's a burglary has happened they need to have a burglary cover in place or if it is a package policy which uh, normally is there for most of the sme clients uh, beat fidelity or money or burglary they are covered under one package policy the first thing that is required in case of a burglary claim is to uh, report the incident to the police the second aspect is to give a detailed description of the loss as they feel would have happened uh, uh, with their own uh, witnesses uh, in their own company that document is required because uh, to understand how the loss has actually happened the the then we need to look at uh, the the police report in many cases uh, the customers do find it difficult to get the final police report but we uh, looking at the quantum of the loss and the kind of claim we go by the initial police report what they have given and in uh, for uh, the final assessment we also have to involve the surveyor to see what is going to be the quantum of loss that needs to be paid ultimately it requires a lot of uh, discussion with the customers to understand their books of accounts what is the value uh, that they are actually claiming on what basis they are claiming and based on the final assessment which is done by the surveyor we settle the claim in uh, in these days all claims are being settled through neft so we will also require a copy of the neft form and a cancelled check so this is what we do in case of uh, the burglary claims in respect of fidelity the uh, normally if a large fidelity loss we would also look at if there any departmental action is being taken against employees or if some kind of inquiry has been uh, um, constituted to look into the circumstances of the loss which led to this kind of uh, fidelity losses uh, obviously in in those cases also we will uh, require a uh, fir report to be filed with the police so these are the documents that we normally would ask uh, in the settlement of claim and nowadays what we do is that with every policy document we are also mentioning the document that needs to be settled with uh, settled to the insurance company at the time of a claim so the the customer can go through his policy document to see in respect of each of these uh, claims be it burglary or fidelity or money insurance what are the documents that he needs to submit to the insurance company or to the surveyor to get his claim settled thank you rama i think uh, uh, two important things you mentioned first was that uh, what is required for a claim is uh, mentioned uh, at the time of selling a policy which i think is a good uh, initiative uh, the second thing which i would like to uh, mention is that uh, let me simplify the entire process of you no know, looking at claims first if a loss happens what one should uh, see is that uh, or what insurance company sees is that that is the loss at you no know, which has happened is it part of the contract for which the cover is provided so that has to be established first second thing which has to be established is that the quantum of loss you no know, what was the uh, quantum of loss that has to be established once that is established then the claim uh, payment becomes easy now that is where all the documentation starts coming in so fundamentally as a customer whenever you have any uh, doubt about this uh, uh, complexity of a claim just break it down to two three simple things first is the loss is this loss or the reason of loss why this asset has been damaged is it covered by the insurance company another contract which again the contract is again a simple one or two uh, page contract it's not very complicated so you can easily see it is there second is the insurance company like to know the quantum of loss and that is what they would like to see because the loss has happened now it's difficult to ascertain what was there earlier if it's a is a fire or if it is a if it's a simple loss is much more easier to ascertain so if you look at the simple claims which happens they get paid very very fast when a complex claim happens then i think the entire effort which happens is trying to establish that this is the quantum of loss and the genuinity of loss so whatever happens in the process of claims it just has to comply with this two three Uh, big buckets, if I may say so. So even as a as a layman, when you look at this, we just see that does it fit in this bucket? If it does fit in the bucket, one should protest that why should I send uh, or give you information which is not no relevant to your case, and that shall be uh, respected. I get back to you again, uh, Shivas, on your uh, perspective, as I always try to get in the customer perspective, and today you present them as a journalist on or some other issue that you would like uh, the panel to address. 
Yes, again, uh, you know, I, I just want to put a macro question, uh, more of a uh, observer of the industry, that uh, uh, as you rightly said, a lot of issues get sorted out if there is clear communication to the customer as to what uh, the amount of money that he is spending towards the insurance and what is getting covered and what is not getting covered. So how does how does it's it's a sort of a, a communication challenge for the industry that what uh, a CEO like yourself you are uh, trying to convey at your level gets articulated at the uh, ground level of each and every company when when uh, you get to have an interface with the customer. So how do you institutionalize? Uh, a strategy of better communication so that uh, there is all round clarity on the company selling the product and also the customer who is buying the product. Uh, thank you, Srivas. I think uh, if I put it, because this is one of our obsession uh, in trying to get this done, uh, two things have to be done. One is at the product stage. Uh, as Rama mentioned earlier, the product has to be simplified more and more. In terms of the coverage being more of an always coverage, no, and exceptions being very few, so that uh, this uh, understanding of the product gets uh, more and more uh, dilute. The second is, uh, I think we are in an era uh, which I find uh, very amazing. You have uh, means of communication which uh, uh, which instantaneous, like you have uh, Twitter, you have uh, LinkedIn, you have uh, Facebook, uh, you have digital media, you have websites, you have call center. In fact, I think most of us, luckily, know uh, or unluckily, in this panel, are the ones which are closer to 40. So, if I take you all back uh, about 20 years back in the same country, in the same work environment, uh, just to get one document uh, from our customer or from our uh, head office, to take uh, weeks to come, you know. And then, uh, if it got lost somewhere, there was no uh, no way of finding it out. So in today's time, when the time of communication is getting less, as a company one, uh, especially from our side as senior management, I think uh, if you if you just check, I'm on Twitter. I still get uh, a lot of customer issues which uh, they write to me and directly, and I make it a point to answer each one of them. Or we are on LinkedIn, and we're very happy to receive. So we're shortening the entire bureaucracy of a customer and the decision makers in the company. And that actually, as you mentioned, trickles down to all our people. Now, we are trying to see that all of uh, the entire employees in the company become very digital friendly. And any customer or a would-be customer or a person who has any grievance, if he wants any query, he should reach out to us. And this is where the demystify insurance series that we are doing is a step towards that. We want to reach out to everybody. We believe the industry does good. The insurance company as such at least are there when, uh, when you require them most. And if I look at the satisfaction ratio of customers, it's also very high. But still, this perception is there. One, maybe we formed a document right to uh, legally complicated. Uh, that could have an issue. We were not so simple earlier. The products had a lot of ifs and buts, which has to be raised out. And third, the communication, as you rightly said, was very, very weak in times to come. But I'm thankful to the digital revolution which is happening. I think this will shorten uh, and in speed up the communication process. And I hope uh, with the simplification of products, the issues will get better and better. And someday when I retire, then people can say, yes, uh, is good that I know an insurer and you have done good for the society. I think that would be the day when you would feel so happy about working for an insurance company all your life. Yeah. But thank you, Srivas, for your uh, perspective. Yeah, if, I, if, I, if I may just add one last bit, I think the adoption of social media and other communication tools have just gone up in the recent times. But the point or the challenge is uh, for those customers who are in the Tier two and tier three cities where they really feel the uh, pinch of getting their issues sorted out in a time bound manner. So the experience part of claim settlement is what I think differentiates a company to another company. I, I fully endorse that, and that's why when I said uh, initially is that our company should be known as a claim paying company, and I think the entire experience of the offering that we give to the customer has to be. Uh, very tailor made and very clear. In fact, uh, for the tier two, tier three cities, or for our villages, that is where Rama mentioned. We clearly mention our uh, call center, our uh, claim procedure uh, with the policy booklet that we are 
uh, gimmick. But then, is it enough? No, I don't think it is enough. Till a customer, when he or she has a claim, the policy document may or may not be there. Now we have to see how do we uh, address that issue. When he or she wants to reach out to us, uh, we should be available 24 by 7 immediately. Because mostly in terms of when a claim happens, it's a panic situation. No, to be fair, if you actually look at it, if any one of us also has an accident or something, we are in a great panic situation. That no time to go through the document, to find out no, where to call, what to do is difficult. I think we have to create more awareness, uh, more literacy, more in terms of simplification of what has to be done in terms of a claim happens. So uh, your point taken and I'm sure that uh, this uh, work will continue and uh, as I said, we shall reach a stage where this becomes much more easier and much more convenient. You want to add yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah, I'm uh, only from uh, motor perspective, uh, I just want to add what Tapan has uh, mentioned. I think a lot of uh, change has already happened in the industry. Uh, for example, uh, now you can buy policy on the website where I think uh, most of the things are uh, very much clear and people uh, or the customer can read uh, all the, uh, you know, uh, conditions uh, and uh, submit pr proposal form personally online. Also there are a lot of uh, you know insurance happening uh, through uh, large brokers who are associated with the uh, automobile manufacturers where the pricing is fixed and uh, uh, claims uh, process also is more or less uh, I think transparent and uh, known uh, to most of the uh, customer nowadays. I think change is happening in this direction, uh, obviously, but uh, there is uh, definitely a scope uh, to improve further, uh, you know, on this. Yeah, yeah, Vijay, I remember when uh, I had a motor claim about 20 years back, it took a couple of months and I also had to carry my bumper to the office to submit it for a salvage check. From those to the cash test days has been very interesting. In fact, there I have a question uh, uh, which uh, states that uh, what is the difference uh, uh, between cash and non cash uh, is from Pradeep from Pune and also it is from uh, Priya uh, from uh, Chandigarh. Uh, would you like to answer this, Rama? Yeah, I think uh, I, I will take this uh, on the cashless. The the advantage to the customer is, is that uh, uh, he doesn't have to fork out the money uh, immediately, so he can actually save on his expenses. Uh, it's also much faster. Uh, in in most of the cases, uh, we have seen that uh, the large, uh, maybe the operations which involve a large amount of money that needs to be paid, a cashless settlement actually helps them in in meeting their overall expenses. Uh, as far as the reimbursement claims are concerned, in many cases uh, where uh, either we don't have the tie-up with uh, those kind of hospitals or where the customer on his own prefers to pay up and then claim the reimbursement from the insurance company. Even in such cases, the, the time limit that uh, we are able to settle the claims is less than eight days. Mo many of the uh, clients prefer to have uh, cashless facilities because they find it much more convenient and much more faster. Uh, the, we, are, we as a company and as an industry also want to push more for cashless settlements because uh, uh, that also helps us create our own image with the customer. So our uh, choice is always to push more for cashless customers so that the customers have got the least of hassles. Thank you, Rama. I have a question from Ragini from Calcutta. If one is a female driving alone and finds herself stranded on the road, uh, it becomes a very scary thing. Have you thought about taking out a special motor policy just for women? This features geared towards safety first and uh, foremost. Ragini, I think that is a subject which is very close to our heart. There are two things that we have done uh, currently. Uh, First and uh, foremost, uh, we have uh, started providing to our female customers uh, uh, roadside assistance uh, services uh, free, which typically means that if your car uh, breaks down on the uh, road, you have a flat tire, you can call a number and somebody will come and change your uh, tire. Or if you run out of fuel, suddenly you cannot even see fuel there. Or if you forget your key or your battery comes off, things can go wrong in the car shall be addressed. Secondly, we have come out with an uh, application uh, by the name of uh, BA Safe, that is obviously Bajajali and Safe, especially for women uh, customers. Uh, it has uh, different provisions, right, from uh, calling up the police uh, to video recording in emergency to uh, sending out uh, hooters to sending out uh, uh, messages to all your friends. I would recommend you download that application. 
as of now, the motor policy as such cannot be changed uh, because, as I said, the progress is still under uh, control regime. On the add-on parts, uh, we are trying to see what all can we add. So, if you have any other uh, suggestion that you want us to incorporate, please do let us know. Uh, as I said, it's a high focus for us. We should have a look into it. Uh, Vijayji, you want to add something to it? Yeah. Uh, further to what Tapal has uh, mentioned, uh, the roadside assistance that uh, uh, we offer and uh, industry, many other companies are offering, I think is a very, very useful uh, add-on which uh, one should opt and especially uh, the uh, uh, women, uh, I think it is very, very uh, beneficial. Uh, not only uh, uh, this assistance will be available on the spot with regard to tire change or quick uh, fixing of the problems, it also helps in case uh, the damage is bigger or the, you know, the vehicle cannot be repaired, transfer of vehicles. It also covers uh, providing taxi for onward journey, it also provides uh, uh, you know, hotel uh, accommodation in certain uh, situations, uh, particularly uh, from our uh, company's, uh, you know, uh, product point of view. So, I think there are a whole lot of advantages and, uh, you know, are, uh, have been built in, which are really beneficial for the safety of the women, actually. In, in I also uh, understand you provide legal assistance uh, on the spot if they are in trouble. Yes, no? I think uh, uh, another, uh, you know, major area is now in case the accident happens, uh, there is, uh, you know, always, uh, everybody is not an uh, expert on the legal side and uh, doesn't understand the implications. So, they can uh, also seek some assistance from our call center, uh, you know, on the legal, uh, you know, side. So, uh, some guidance can be provided. Uh, I have a question from Sam from Delhi. Uh, does being overinsured help me in receiving a better claim payout? Sam, neither being overinsured nor being underinsured uh, helps. Overinsured means that you have paid uh, more uh, premium than uh, what you are covering, which is uh, which to you would be detrimental. Underinsured means that you have paid less than what you should be covering. Uh, the mantra is that you should be adequately insured. So ask this question uh, when you are taking the uh, policy. And if you see that the value of your property will move up, let's say towards uh, as it progresses towards the year, so a bit to take care of that would be uh, good, uh, which should be uh, done. Uh, now I think we are towards the last leg of our uh, uh, demystifier. Request each of the panelists if they have some view they'd like to mention uh, to our customers and to our viewers. We're happy to receive that. Or if some question which is there, we are very happy to take. So I would start uh, uh, with uh, uh, Mr. Sunil uh, first. See, basically, I'm concerned with the court matters only. Now, when we matter comes to the court, uh, we find that uh, because of illiteracy of the claimant, the, they are overburdened by the concerned advocates, some advocates rather. So we have to make an attempt to educate the people uh, and informing that what should be the criteria of uh, filing in a claim in court. Secondly, we must opt that uh, pre-litigation uh, settlement uh, facility and if we come to know from our own sources or from our uh, from, from newspapers that such and such vehicle has met with an accident, we can check up it from our own MS and uh, approach to the concerned uh, victim for settlement of the claim. It will reduce legal burden on the company and so, uh, so also the uh, victims will get faster uh, help. That's all. Thank you, Mr. Sunil. Uh, move on to uh, Vasu. Any last comment from your side? I mean, not particularly uh, on claims, but to something to add to what Mr. Srivats had said. We, from our claims per experience, we see there are a lot of gaps on the bank assurance side, where banks cover stocks. There is a huge gap on the value at risk and the value insured. This is where I would request both the clients and the insurers to pay closer attention to see that these gaps are minimized. And the perception of understanding that, okay, the, the client pays a premium, it is deducted from his account and he says, oh, I'm insured. And when a claim comes, he sees he's grossly underinsured because the bank decides to insure it for the 
loan amount and there are various such limitations that come in and this is where i would especially the this forms the large chunk of the uh, sme segment or individual customers whether it's about housing or there is a lot of uh, missed information and misguiding happening on uh, in this segment very valid point vasu and i think that uh, that is again somewhere where a lot of uh, issue comes in i would strongly recommend that even if if the bank is insuring your asset because they are given loan as uh, vasu mentioned they actually insure for the loan amount uh, which is there it's our duty as a client or as insurance company to actually have a discussion that what is the actual value at uh, risk can you insure for that this does happen a lot of times and it, i think is a very valid uh, statement uh, made there's one more which i see i'll take that before i move to my next panelist uh, is from harsh the pieces can a tenant claim for burglary loss harsh the there's a policy for tenants also which is the householder policy you know even if your tenant uh, your assets in your house which uh, is owned by you uh, can be taken i would recommend that you buy a householder policy and uh, god forbid if something goes wrong or a burglary the insurance company shall take care of that i move on to uh, shivas i think he's raised very interesting uh, question and uh, thought uh, provoking uh, statements uh, his last comments uh... yeah, so thank you uh, just extend my thought on this to say that uh, industry has made at least the private insurers have made rapid strides uh, on the uh, aspect of filling the gap uh, in the recent years but i think uh, a little more can be done on the aspect of uh, innovatively communicating to the uh, uh, stakeholders and customers i think industry should strategize to look at how better we can communicate whether we should use the social media or whether we should use uh, uh, the company websites should be put out uh, frequently asked questions what better way to reach out to the customer who is uh, reasonably literate to understand the nuances of insurance i think a little more can be done and uh, a lot could be done on the aspect of improving financial literacy which is always a uh, a gap in the indian system but uh, i think uh, my understanding is companies are doing their bit and uh, some more from their side could be helpful i fully agree with you shivas i think some of it that you mentioned as you rightly mentioned companies will be doing that but that is not what they should be satisfied with it should be a continuous process improvement until we reach that last mile and uh, there the person said yes i know what i'm covered for and no if a thing happens what to do we should not uh, rest uh, your point uh, taken i move on to rama for his last comments yeah the one i think uh, what you started uh, with the initial thoughts is that in spite of uh, we as an industry paying so many claims still uh, the the thought process within the general public is that uh, we don't pay claims that is i feel a lot to do with the fact that uh, how we are able to uh, sensitize our marketing people the the intermediaries and things like that if they are able to propagate the right kind of features right at the time of the sale process itself i think all these issues which comes up at the time of claim can be actually brought out we as a company we have been trying a lot of things in uh, ensuring that we give a lot of training to to these intermediaries and also to the front line sales people a lot of uh, new aspects by way of animations have also been brought in but i i do accept the fact that we as a industry need to do much more and i accept uh, srivats uh, condition that the the sale process and the claim process for the customer needs to be much more simpler and easier when we look at the day side i'm good if my cto is uh, is uh, looking at it with such kind of passion i'm sure uh, we will move to the next level very soon uh, vijay ji your last comment yeah uh, from uh, uh, motor side i think uh, uh, the indian industry has done wonderful job Uh, and uh, evolved uh, uh, over the last uh, many years uh, at the same the regulator also done wonderful job by keeping uh, you know simple basic motor product uh, and which is common for all insurance companies of course uh, the top up covers can be bought by the insured uh, with regard to claim payment i think the process has been fairly simplified by the industry and uh, i think it is 
as easy as anywhere else in the world, I think. Yeah, I agree. We again also agree that we keep on pushing the barrier and, uh, and we get closer to customer on his understanding. I'd like to thank uh, all my panelists and I'd like to thank all of you who are viewing this. Uh, I think you make a big difference uh, because this endeavor, this passion shall remain on demystifying insurance as much as possible, on taking it to the last customer, last file, taking inputs, pushing our improvement or our our company to the next level of uh, customer experiences or customer offering. We promise to continue doing that. Thank you all for being there. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you.